Hello everyone, and today I will be showing you my new home server setup that I am making. My goal for this was to do it as low cost as possible. So what I will be using is I have this cheap 256 gig SSD that I got on Amazon for $20. Um, that's going to be the boot drive. I've got some extra SATA cables. I have two of these WD Blue two terabyte drives. And the computer I will be using is this old Gateway DX4860 that I had sitting around. Uh, it is perfectly adequate for what I want to do. Um, and it costs no dollars since I already had it. So, let's get this opened up and see what we have inside. So this computer has a second gen Core i5 quad core processor with four sticks of DDR3 1333 mega transfers, two gig sticks each for a total of eight gigs of RAM. The power supply in this unit is a 300 watt unit. It has just some cheap old graphics card, which is not necessary for a server, but it has plenty of space for storage. So I already have one hard drive installed. I will be installing the other. It is very tricky to get into this hard drive cage right here um, because all the power supply cables are attached to it and this does not come off. So let's go ahead and get this out. Beautiful. Hard drives are installed. Now let's get the boot drive installed. Okay. So we have our boot drive installed. It is an SSD, so it can just kind of dangle there. It's secured. And then we have our two hard drives, and this is the original drive that came with the computer. I am leaving it in there, um, just in case I ever want to use it. So let's get this put back together, and we will install our software. So the software that we're going to be using for this is TrueNAS Core. I chose this because it was easy to use and highly recommended. So we will go ahead and download TrueNAS Core. Download TrueNAS Core 13. Now that TrueNAS is downloaded, we'll go ahead and go over into the Lena Etcher, flash from file, choose our ISO, and this is the drive that I am using. So we will flash it, and we will let it flash, and then we will install. All right, so we are ready to install TrueNAS now. 
I have the computer set up. I have it connected to this monitor right here. And I have a keyboard installed and I have the drive formatted. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Center setup. So you can see the 8 gigs, the second gen core i5, 4 core at 2.8 gigahertz. Wow, it's kept it the day. I haven't used this computer in years. Let's see, okay. So it has detected everything. And TrueNAS is loaded. Choose install. And so we will just go ahead and install there. Select a drive with spacebar. Hmm. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, so we will be back once this has completed. Okay, TrueNAS installation has completed. Please reboot and remove the installation medium. Okay. We will reboot the system. Remove the USB drive. I guess we are continuing installation of TrueNAS. Okay, so TrueNAS has completed installing. It has a local IP address, so we will move over to the computer for final setup. We are back, ready to log in to the TrueNAS interface. So we will go ahead and we will type in http colon slash slash 10.0.0.17. Default login is root and password is a password that we have set. So we have TrueNAS ready to go. We will go over here and add a new pool. We will create a pool. We will give it a name, and we will use the suggested layout, that is fine. Now it gives us two options, we have Stripe and we have Mirror. Stripe makes both drives accessible, and Mirror is completely redundant. We will go with the completely redundant option for security, since having Stripe if one drive fails everything is lost. So, for protection we will stay with mirror. That is fine capacity for me. So, we will create our pool. And, here we go. Alright, so after I have done some configurations and setup and uh, network adjustments we are completed so we have network storage pool here and we have Samba share running so in order to and to log in and access your server from a Windows device you will do backslash backslash 
your IP address. For me, it is 192.168.0.167. And you will log in with the credentials that you set up in the accounts. So over here, you can see that I have set myself up an account in addition to the root user. But you will log in with the user that you create. And you can see there's all my data that I had. So in order to do this on the Mac, you'll open up Finder, you'll go over here to Network, and it'll show up with the TrueNAS. So you click on that, and then you click over here to Sign In As, and you'll sign in with the username that you set to log in to the Samba Share. Double click that, and there's your files. I would also like to map my server as like a local drive so I can access it from anywhere on Windows. So once you have logged in, you will right click and on Windows 11, you'll show more options and click map network drive. And you can select any drive letter that you have available. I'll choose Z, that's fine. And you can see that it is mapped. So if I go over to this PC, I have my server mapped right here for easy access. So that is quickly an overview of TrueNAS. I decided not to do an in-depth setup on TrueNAS because your use case will be different from mine. And there are plenty of excellent guides out there that will assist you in setting up TrueNAS. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that you found this enjoyable.